I greet you all. My name is Ekdesi Bonilez and yeah, I'm making this video on grade 12 electric circuits. This is part two of the first video I made in first video of electric circuits grade 12. I was just covering the background and the theory and I just wanted to do this video to just cover two questions of 2015 and 2016 and just um, give you some help on, on how to approach these questions. So without wasting any time, um, let's get started. So the first paper is the, I think, grade 12, November 2015, paper one, physical sciences. Um, so electric circuits is question nine. So let's read. A battery with an internal resistance of one ohm and an unknown EMF is connected in a circuit as shown below. A high resistance voltmeter V is connected across the battery. So there is a voltmeter. A1 and A2 represent ammeters of negligible resistance. So the ammeter here, ammeter there. Um, when a switch S is closed, the current passing through the 8 ohm resistor, this is 0 0.5 amperes. So, one of the things that you will just need to look out for in this question, the simplest thing, identify the series and the parallel connections of the circuit. So, we said, how do you differentiate or distinguish between series and parallel connections within the circuit. So parallel sections will be connections that are down an axis and series connections will be series that are along the pathway of the circuit. So along the pathway of the circuit the series down some axis um, is parallel. So if you look at for example this eight ohm resistor to this 16 ohm resistor, there's a like a down a vertical axis joining them. Um, they lie both lie along the same vertical axis. But if you look at both of them with respect to this resistor, they're in series with this resistor because they lie along the path. And now you want to look at also this entire section, so one, two, three resistors relative to this resistor R here. And you should see that all of these, they're relative to this R, they are down a vertical axis, which tells you that it, they're all parallel to R. Okay, and okay, so let's get to the question. Now you've done the analysis of series and parallel, you know exactly what is which is series to what, which is parallel to what. Okay, state Ohm's law in words. So, what I would advise in terms of this definition, um, is to help you remember if you need, if you will, I remember the expression V equals I times R, instead of R equals V over I, it's the same thing, but making V the subject of the formula, V equals I times R and and then from V equals I times R, uh, I wrote down the answer here. So if I, I wrote, I remember V equals I times R. And so this tells me that if the potential difference, so Ohm's law can be stated this way. The potential difference across the ends of the terminals of the resistor is directly proportional to the current I through the resistor, provided the resistance or the temperature remains constant. I would mention the temperature. You, you, uh, I prefer mentioning the temperature rather than the resistance or mention them both, but mostly, most importantly, mention the temperature. So Ohm's law is that the potential difference or the voltage across the ends or terminals of the resistor is directly proportional to the current through the resistor, provided the temperature remains constant provided the resistance remains constant so that's what i was writing here okay now they want us to calculate the reading on ammeter a1 so the reading on this ammeter and we said first thing we have to remember is that this section is is in parallel 
but it's in series related to this. And when we have to just pick up what do we know about resist about currents in series and, and, and currents in parallel. So current in parallel is additive. So you know your total current through this section you need to add these together. But current in series is the same. So these are in series together. This combined uh, the eight this this whole parallel section and this they're in series together. So the current passing through this se whole section and this should be the same value. And now I say the current in the parallel section is additive. Fortunately, we've been told what the current in this section here is in the 8 ohm resistor. We've been told that it's 0 0.5 amperes. So now we can get um, what, else, what else do we know about the about parallel? So we mentioned the current. What else do we know about parallel sections? About in parallel, the voltage is the same. So the voltage um, across the ends of this resistor and, and this resistor is the same because they're in parallel. In parallel, the voltage remains the same um, in all resistors. So the voltage passing through here is the voltage passing through there. So you've got the resistance here. And you've got the current here for this resistor. So using V equals I times R, we can get the we can get um, we uh, 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 we can get the voltage passing through here. And once we've got the voltage passing through here, we've got the resistance as well. We can calculate the current passing through this resistor. And then since it's uh, and now we'll have the current passing through there, and the current passing through there, and then we just add them together. Because the total resistance here um, is the same as the total. I mean, the total current here is the total current in this section since they're in series together, and that will be the exact current that is determined by this ammeter. So basically, to show you what I've just explained, I've done this. Um, so you you can find the voltage through the 8 ohm resistor, and that voltage will be the same as the 16 ohm resistor because they're in series, they're in parallel to one another. And so then, now you will have the voltage and the resistance of the 16 ohm resistor. You can work out the current. And because it's a parallel section, this the current is additive, so you add them together to find the total current in this current parallel section. And so, of course, we can find the total current in the parallel section. And that is the same current that is found on this resistor because it's in series to that. To this whole section, and we find, and that is the current that is read by this ammeter here, and we find that that current is this. So, I hope you understood that process. Um, I do not worry about this. What I often do in this approach, it's good to redraw and reconceptualize. So, you can often want sometimes the approach that you can use is condense. Um, parallel sections into a single resistor or condense bigger sections or branches of the circuits into one resistor so for example you can add these to the parallel approach of adding resistance which is the inverse and you can get a value for one resistor it may be useful and you'll know that that one resistor will have the same current as this and you find if you do that you find that the sum use it of these two parallels will be 5.33 that's what I was just redrawing for myself there yeah I hope this was helpful for you for the first answer okay so now we want to move on to the next question if R delivers a power of 12 watts calculate the reading on A2 so Firstly, we remember what is power. Power, mathematical definition, energy per unit charge, or the work done per second. So power is W over T or E over T. Um, but power, we, uh, as we're looking at the um, parameters we have here, remember in circuits we work with resistance, voltage, and current. R equals V over I. So it might not be as useful to you. You think of power as work over time but keep that in mind in some questions it might be useful or joules per second is what's energy over time 
that's also power but in electricity this is probably more useful so we want to calculate the current here using the power so we have the power and the current here is the current that is of course in this resistor so p equals v times i p equals v times i um, so we've got the power so we need to find the voltage in order for us to find the current here so then um, what the approach that I used remember I said you can condense big sections into one um, into one large resistor so this worked out to 5.33 ohms add that together with this you get one big resistor here of 25 ohms so I'm reconceptualizing you can think of it so I redrew it like this 25.33 ohms and the reason why I did that is because in parallel remember that um, the voltage is the same so if these are in parallel that 25.33 ohm is just all of these combined into one single resistor that is parallel to this and the voltage is the same in parallel so if we can find the voltage here we can find the voltage there and the voltage was what we needed to find the current because we're using p equals v over i okay so we've already found that the current in this section was 0 0.75 because that was in a1 and now we've got the total resistance in that in this section as well as 25.33 and we can work out the voltage of this that this top part here and now and now we've got that voltage and that voltage would be the same as an R because they're in parallel and now we can work out the current and that's how we've got A2 um, P equals V of, uh, times I and we've got P we've got V and now we can work out the current um, yeah I hope that helps you so now we're just gonna look at this last I think it's the last one here here okay yeah calculate the reading on the emitter when switch and switch s is open the reading on the emitter help oh, calculate the reading on the voltmeter when switch s is open switch s is open means there is no current flowing through the cell so what is that telling you the reading on the voltmeter here um okay is that what that's what we want to find we want to find the voltage in the terminals of the battery basically or the ends of the battery remember always have this idea always think of this when you are told that the, the switch is open there's no current working then you're always going to know that you're working with the emf because the emf is the total amount of voltage to perform work when there is no current running through the circuit so then we want to find the voltage across the terminals of the battery and I may, in the previous video I made with the theory, I gave you this expression. The voltage across the terminals is equal to the, the difference between the electromotive force minus the, minus the product of the current and the resistance. And so um, we want to find um, the... Uh, so we we want to find um, the total. So we're gonna use the total current here um, for for to to work this out as we work because we 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 were looking at um, the the total current available in the circuit. Um, even though this we're, we're technically calculating across the battery there the, the, and that's why the switch s was open so opening the switch basically was just forcing the voltmeter to get the potential difference across the battery so using this expression you basically remember i said when there is no current or the reading on the voltmeter on the switch s is open there's no current so it just hints at, at you that you're going to be working with EMF at some point. So we can work out the EMF 
um, this way the voltage across the terminals of the battery we have um, the voltage across the terminals of the battery because that's it basically the voltage um, the voltage available for the work of the circuit so we've we've we know we know that this section has been parallel to this and we found in the previous question it's 19 volts so this whole section has 19 volts because it's in parallel and parallel the voltage is the same so we thought of this as 25.33 ohms parallel with r and the voltage was the same here and the voltage was the same there because they would be in parallel i'm making reference to this and 19 volts 19 volts so the battery across the terminal voltage to do work is 19 volts and the total current um, that is available in this section to do work is 1.38 the internal resistance we're told is 1 so that's our EMF but now we want to find um, so we want to find the um, basically Actually, I, I I did this in a funny way. Um, we should have um, we 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 we, it, we we could have just figured or deduced the voltage, um, the volt the reading on the voltmeter. Um, we could have just deduced it from knowing all this about the parallel section because the voltage across the voltmeter is the terminal voltage. It's the voltage to do the work on the circuit. It's not the EMF. It'll be, of course, less than the EMF, which we've worked out to be 20.38 volts. So I could have deduced this 19 volts just from the parallel section. I believe I could have done it so using a fair argument. Um, working on the EMF is good. It shows you that it's not, in fact, the EMF. It's a less than EMF, so it's a terminal potential difference. You could have explained this in words and probably gotten away with the answer really. I kind of worked this backwards so I got the answer but I, I worked it backwards but it's good let's just continue going with this so so now I, 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 I uh, in this approach I'm looking at um, I say okay um, the, 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 the if we're looking at um, the uh, 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 the resistance I worked out this resistance here R so I said 19 it has 90 volts by 0 0.63 I found that this is 30 ohms so they didn't ask that but now you you can see how it can be done and basically I worked out the equivalent resistance of this section with that section remember this idea here I worked out the equivalent resistance of that and then I got 14 ohms and then of course since um, current is additive for resistors in parallel I added these together um, got the 1.38 and I got the terminal voltage 1.38 times 14 and I still got the 19 so basically here I think what I was doing I, I did this part some a few days ago um, I sometimes did the working out here, like to work out how I got the I. I probably just did the working out here and, I, and then just substituted the value here above, which is strange because I've used values that I've calc and I show how I calculated them after. So I apologize for that, but I hope that this will be insightful enough for you um, and help you. Okay, so let's move on to the 2016 paper November 2016 um, physics paper one let's just run through it quickly um, in physics in November 2016 paper one um, electricity was question eight so let's just rush down to question eight okay in the circuit below the battery has an EMF of 12 volts and an internal resistance of 0 0.2 ohms the resistance of the co connecting wires are negligible so I'm not going to explain that as much things as I did in the other video. Process is pretty much the same. I'm just going to go straight into the questions. Yeah, to save time. So the first question they ask us to find the term EMF of a battery. Basically, the EMF 
of the battery is the total voltage or potential difference of the battery available to perform work in the circuit. It is a voltage or potential difference on the battery when no current is flowing throughout the circuit. So I'm defining that from my head, but let's just read what I've written. The EMF is the voltage of the battery that is available to perform the work in the circuit. It is a total voltage av available when no current is flowing in the circuit. Pretty much what I've said. So when switch S is open, as it is, no current is flowing. Um, uh, so we have the voltage. When we put a voltmeter across the battery, we'll see the EMF. Basically just applying a definition. When switch S in o is open, a high resistance voltmeter is con con connected across points A and B. What will be the reading on the voltmeter? It will be 12 volts because there's no current flowing, so the voltage across the terminals of the battery is the EMF itself. Remember our definition of the EMF here, especially the second part. Second part, the EMF is the total voltage available when no current is flowing through the circuit. Okay, so then now we want to just rush through this part of the question. Switch S is now closed. The same voltmeter is now connected across point C and D over here. What will the reading on the voltmeter be? So, in that section, um, basically there's there's no reading on for the voltmeter here. There's nothing. There's no potential difference that it's really measuring here. So it's zero volts. That answer is zero volts. I've written out that out here. Eight point one point three. And now moving along, when switch S is closed, the potential difference across the terminals of the battery is 11.7. So this is V terminal. If you remember this expression for that, this expression, V term equals epsilon minus IR. Epsilon just represents the EMF. So if we remember this expression, in this question that we're doing now in this paper, the EMF would be 12 volts and the V term would be 11.7 and it should be less because EMF or the terminal voltage, the terminal potential difference is less because of the internal resistance and so forth. Okay, so now they want us to calculate the current in the battery. They want us to calculate the current in the battery. So that's like calculating the total current. I, this one, I, yeah. So they want us to calculate the current in the battery. So we can we can use our expression from 2015. V term equals epsilon i minus r. We have uh, e epsilon. We we have small r. We have we have v term. We just want i because they told you that's 11.7. That's 12. R we've been told as well we just have to solve for I if you know this expression this is a very easy question um, and I've mentioned it to you V terms the terminal potential difference across the battery it's a um, potential difference measured on the battery when current is flowing and it should be less than the in, than the EMF in this case 11.7 and yeah so this is basically just substitution very simple question to remember this expression and understand it as I've explained it to you, you should be fine. And that's this is where I've done the calculation. Um, okay, so effective calculate the effective resistance of the parallel branch. Very e easy question as well. Um, the parallel branch is here. Calculate the resistance. It's just we know the approach to calculate the resistance of the parallel branch is just. The reciprocal 1 over ERQ equals 1 over 10 plus 1 over 15. Or you can use a nicer, more condensed version. REQ equals R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2, which we, we have, which I've written down here. And you should get 6 ohms. It should be a very simple question. Um, you, it's just a matter of knowing that this is a parallel section. How do we calculate resistance in parallel? And if you know that, then this is an easy mark. Now we just want to do the last question, calculate the resistance of resistor R. 
calculate the resistance of resistor R. Um, we just want to calculate this resistance. So we got, so we have the the resistance here. Uh, we've just we just worked it out. The six ohms. See, I've redrawn this again. I've redrawn the parallel connection as one resistor, and we know now that we see that we have two resistors in series. So what do we know in series? The current here is the same as the current there. The voltage is additive. The voltage is the two voltages here. They should add up to eleven point seven. Okay. So now, uh, sorry. Let me just close this twenty fifteen. It's very distracting now. Okay. So the resistance of R. Uh, we have series now. This is a very nice way of reducing it. So we just want the resistance of R. So we already said we we know they're in series. Current here is the same. Current here is the same. Voltages. You had add them together you should get 11.7 so we work from this 6 ohm resistor which is basically the parallel branch which you condense into one resistor by drawing redrawing um, so we know that the current the resistance there is 6 volts the current there is um, 1.5 amperes so we can work out the voltage 9.5 volt I mean 9 volts and we said because this is a uh, this is a series, the voltage should be additive. So the sum of the voltages here and there it should be 11.7. So I don't think I did it that way here, but I think 11.7 minus 9 should give me 2.7. Yes, that's basically what I was doing. And now we have the voltage uh, across this resistor as well. And we have the current because the current is 1.5 here so the current should be 1.5 here because this is a series with that and don't forget of course this 6 ohm resistor is not appearing on a paper but adding combining those parallels connect uh, resistors together adds up to 6 ohms we just redo it like this because it's easier to see now it's the problem is basically simplified so now yeah, we have this 2.7 volts here, 1.5 current. We can easily work out the resistance to 1.8 ohms. Um, yeah, I, I realize I might have gone fast for some of sections, um, but I hope you will be able to slow down the video and look at the working out that I put up for you and look at my working and um, yeah, and the concepts are pretty much the same. I hope this video was insightful and helpful to you. Um, yeah, if you need any help further, leave your comments and your um, below. And please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.